everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a new game with me, The Loop. It's a quirky cooperative game that I think, spoiler, is the next best cooperative board game that has recently came out, published by Pandasaurus Games. So let's get straight to it, as there is some complexity to the game. The board is set up with some red cubes placed in some areas. These red cubes are rift cubes. Bad for you. They are created by Dr. Fu's time machine. For each era, there is a space for three of these, and once a fourth one is placed, the rifts will damage that era of time, and it turns into a vortex, which again is bad for you all. The green cubes are energy cubes. Good for you players. These will be placed out during the game to be used as a resource by any player that's in the era where the resource is located, either to move or to spin to loop, a cool mechanic in the game which I will explain later. There are seven total eras, each going further back in time or forward in time. Some of these areas will also have Dr. Fu duplicates placed on them. These are these circle tokens with Dr. Fu's face on them. One side will list the generation where it should be placed first when placed on the board, and the other side is the era where the duplicate needs to be pushed to for it to get destroyed. Players want to get rid of as many of these tokens as possible because they cause more rift cubes to be placed when Dr. Fu is in that location. Each player will control an agent, and all agents have their own special abilities and some with different difficulty levels to play them. In addition, they each have their own different starting cards. This game is also a deck builder, so players will start with six cards at the beginning of the game, but players will be able to pick up additional cards to do additional actions. Players will have a hand limit of three cards each turn, and the card has its action listed on the bottom. As you learn the game, you will also notice that the icons on the left side will also help you quickly see what type of thing that card will affect. Lastly, the top left of that card will show what dimension that that card belongs to, and this is important when a player loops, and players will want to try to collect multiple cards of matching dimensions to better combo their cards. The game starts out with two missions being revealed out on the board, and players will work together to try to fulfill four total missions in the game to win. But this is when you play in the sabotage mode, as there are different modes of how you play this game. But in this sabotage mode, you will need to achieve four sabotage tiles to win. You will lose when either four vortex appear, or when a second vortex appears in the same era, or when Dr. Fu cycles through its deck three times. These are Dr. Fu's cards here. One of these will be flipped out on each player's turn, but when all cards have been revealed, then they will be shuffled together and placed on this second slot here. And this is the last slot where if cycled through, you all will lose the game if you didn't complete the four missions. These are the artifact cards, which are cards that you will gain to place in your deck. One of these cards will be placed out on each player's turn matching the era that it belongs to, and when you end your turn in an era with one or more of these artifact cards, then you can pick one of them to place on the top of your deck to add to your cards, giving you different actions to perform. Now I did mention that this is the sabotage mode, but you can instead play other modes that change the rules a bit or changes the win and lose conditions. Anyways, on your turn you will follow the same steps each time changing how the board is laid out and giving you actions according to your cards. Dr. Fu will always go first and he will cause some trouble. In the first round of the game or when Dr. Fu's cards are in this first slot here, the active player will draw a random duplicate, one, from the bag that is then added to the era listed on the generation side. You will look at the icon to see where it goes, and then you will flip it over to show Dr. Fu and where you need to push him to to get rid of that duplicate. You will then draw the top artifact card and place it off the board next to the era where the card is from, shown on the bottom left. This card is now available for all players to add to their decks if they end their turn in that era. On subsequent rounds when Dr. Fu's cards are in different slots, then you will add more duplicates to the board, or whatever it shows on that slot. As you can see, it will get more intense as the game goes on. So after you have added the duplicates and the artifact card, you will then reveal and apply the top Dr. Fu card. This card will indicate where Dr. Fu is transporting to through his time machine. 
The center slide will point to the shown error on that card. Rift cubes will then be dropped into the machine where chances of them landing will be divided into the three possible eras with slides pointing towards them. You will determine the number of rift cubes to drop by taking two plus the number of duplicate tokens currently in the era where Dr. Fu is at. Again, rifts form a vortex when four rift cubes are present in an era. If a vortex forms, then the mission that is either present or flipped over or still face down is discarded from the game, never to be finished. This gives players less chances to complete four missions total. Also, when a vortex appears, all artifact cards are discarded. After all the mayhem, it is then your turn to fix some of it in the action phase. Players will be able to use their three cards in any order to perform actions, but location is key. Players will need to move to specific locations to take advantage of their cards. Cards will mostly deal with adding more energy onto the board, removing rift cubes, moving duplicates to get rid of them faster, moving their agent on the board, or somehow interacting with an artifact card. Besides using your cards for their stated actions, you are also able to move from your current era to a neighboring one by using your one per turn move. After using this, you will flip over your player tile board showing that the free move is used up. Or if there is a green cube in your current location, you can use that green cube to move discarding it from the board. The last and most strategic action is to perform a loop. Dr. Fu can be quite powerful, but the agency has their secret weapon, the loop, also known as the time loop. Players can use energy from their current era to ready already exhausted cards played that turn. To perform a loop for the first time on a turn, it costs one energy, discarding it from the current location. The player can then ready all their cards from one single dimension shown on the top left of their cards. So if a player has all three cards of the same dimension when performing a loop, then they can ready all three cards and play them again. Sometimes players will only be able to ready a single card, but if it's played at a good time, it can do wonders. If a player wishes to do another loop on the same turn, then it will cost two energy and a third time it will cost three, and so on. So players can perform as many loops as they wish as they have energy available. Besides those actions, some characters have special abilities that can be used as their own completely separate actions, so plug those into your plan as well. After you are done performing actions on your turn, getting rid of duplicates and rifts and adding energy and moving to other eras, you'll be able to add one artifact card in the era where you end your turn to your deck if there is one available. This card is placed on top of your deck to be used for the next turn. At this point, if you have accomplished a sabotage tile or one of the missions that you are currently in, meaning you are currently located in the place where that sabotage tile is ready to be completed in, then you can archive it, removing it from the board. Remember, in the sabotage game mode, you need to do four of these, but other game modes might add or change this. The active player will then lastly turn over their agent tile to full batteries, discard their used cards from their hand, and all players with less than three cards in their hand will draw up to the three cards. These steps will be repeated for the following players, and whenever Dr. Fu's pile is empty, you will reshuffle those cards and place them in the next space. The game ends when either a victory or a defeat condition is met. The rulebook does a great job explaining the game, but it also includes some clarification on various aspects of the game like the sabotage tile missions or the artifact card abilities. That way you can figure out things out without guessing how the game is actually played. Again, this is the best new cooperative game that has come out in quite some time. It has a little pandemic feel to it as you are trying to complete a mission while putting out various fires, but there is so much more to this game. Your missions in the game are always different, it's not the same thing each time, and the fires that you're putting out have a big variety as well. 
The way you deal with all this is done with your deck of cards. So then you add into your strategy which cards you want to pick up that you see out on the board, which can help you to do more things in the game, but you have to end your turn in that specific era to get that card. So the strategy is very multi-layered as you are focusing on several aspects of the game. You're adding energy, you're removing rifts, you're pushing duplicates to desired eras, you're picking up cards that match your deck well, or picking up cards that will help according to the current state on the board. Sometimes you need to find cards to help put out one of the things that causes the fires. Like if none of the players have any good cards that help push duplicates to the areas they need to go to, then you might need to find some of those cards because these duplicates will add up and cause Dr. Fu to drop more rifts, causing even more vortexes, causing you to lose the game. So players will need to pay attention to each other's plans and what's happening on the board to better put out fires and to better complete sabotage tiles to progress and win the game. The mechanics in this game seems pretty different from most cooperative games that are like this as players will need to create their own deck and to perform actions from those cards. And they will need to do this by figuring out which of those cards they want that are around the board. The loop mechanic also is amazing as you get to do more during your turn, but you need to plan your deck by having cards with similar dimensions, but also enough energy to perform it on your turn in the location that you're currently at. And the artifact cards are how you can get more energy onto the board to do all these things. Overall, this game is designed to be played more than just a couple of times. As the game has four modes, it has several sabotage tiles that give a different goal every time you play. There is a huge stack of artifact cards, and each character plays a little bit differently. Although the theme and the feel of the game is cartoonish, and gives a feel that the game might be for kids, the strategy is packed in this game and the mechanics for me makes it a strategic game that can be played with kids, but there is a lot of pieces that need to fit together, so it needs a player who can help lead or guide the game along, as the game, again, is very multi-layered. So get ready to defeat Dr. Fu, being a part of the agency with your family and friends in The Loop by Pandasaurus Games. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.